honor. Let's let's get on topic. Let's get let's, there. <laughs> let's let's talk about what is the brand story behind the name Honor? Like, wh- how does Honor work? All right. So we all know that Honor and Huawei they used to be together back in the days, and then came at a time that uh, Honor became its own entity. So we moved out and we started uh, entering the markets uh, across the globe, actually, not only just in China. And that's where we started launching our own devices. We started launching different series. And that's where we sort of shifted from how uh, the people see the company. So at the beginning, it was like a sort of an entry-level company. It was mid-range smartphones, very popular online. Okay. And then when we separated, we became our own entity. We became a little bit more towards uh, technology. Our devices became more towards human centricity. I remember seeing Honor ads everywhere on billboards in yeah. the beginning. The marketing was very aggressive as well. As a brand, what was the direction to create a device that is more focused towards humans or towards like... All right, so usually how we see it in the market, we can notice that most of the brands, they focus on the product itself. Okay. Right. Uh, what we are trying to focus on is how can our products actually help our consumers in the everyday life. Right. So it's not only just about having a smartphone, you know, in terms of good camera and, you know, good specifications, good looks, and that's it. But no, it's actually more about how can it make their life easier? Right. How can it make their life more productive? You more use convenient? this device 24-7. You have... Basically. Yeah. So it's, it's not only about the smartphones anymore. So it's about how we create a smarter life for our consumers. So I'll give you an example. Yeah. I'll give you an example. So we're talking, for example, you walk at home, you're approaching your door, uh, the door identifies that it's you, unlocks automatically, you go in the house, curtains start going up, your favorite music goes on, you receive notification from the fridge that you have, I don't know, low uh, stock of meat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? So everything around you will be connected, uh, starting from your smartphone, that's the base, and then moving forward, that's literally unlimited possibilities of what you can have. Your smartphone is basically talking to every single device all around absolutely, you for you. Absolutely, and that's the whole idea, is actually taking uh, the whole concept of just the device on its own, where it's just specifications and it's just a tool, to taking everything around you and how all their devices make your life better. I want to just jump in there, but it's not easy for a company to come in and do that. How do you guys go about it? Like the R&D behind it, what is the amount of you know effort that goes behind creating something Absolutely. like this? So usually when it comes to R&D, a lot of the companies in the market, they do invest in R&D, but I'm pretty sure not as much as owners. So we are having 60% of our manpower is actually dedicated to the seven R&D centers that we're having. So if you take a look at this aspect, you see that the company is dedicated towards introducing new technologies, introducing new innovations that has not been done in the market. And we can see that from the latest products that has been launched uh, recently from Honor, we can see that there is a lot of technology that other brands that have been in the market for many years, they did not achieve. I hear that a lot, like certain features that you see that the companies that have been there for a long time, they never release it, they never drop it. They wait and Correct. they wait and they wait. But is uh, there a reason for that? I believe it's it's all about the, the dedication. So is there a reason that brands delay launching features and at the same time at what stage like how fa- how far into the future is honor with the features and with the technology beautiful so love the question uh, i believe that's a question that everybody's asking so when it comes to honor and its dedication towards the r&d uh, the development i can say that monthly we are having 300 different patents that we actually register no way Yes, absolutely. And this is one of the reasons the dedication that we're having towards making technology better, not just for the smartphones, but everything around us. I have a question. That's could, you, could you tell me one of these patents, like the most exclusive, like the biggest? I wish I can. You can. Oh, okay. It's all <laughs> I wish I can. Exclusive information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you'll see in the future. I mean, we have already started launching a lot of these technologies on the smartphones, uh, right. on the tablets, on the ecosystem that we're building. Uh, right. Other than that, you'll be seeing it in the future. So what is the what is the level of quality that Honor tries to provide to its customers? This is something that we care a lot about. As I said from the very beginning, is that we are moving towards being human-centric, yeah. not a product-centric company. Uh, one of the main things that we're focusing on is the quality. Right. We don't want consumers to purchase the phone or purchase any of our products, start using it for maybe a year and be like, oh, 
you know, broke down. Phones these days are literally built to dis- be destroyed in a year's time or be upgraded. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something that we actually want to change. We want our consumers to purchase the device. They get used to it. They use it for whatever time period they want. They shouldn't be having this, you know, oh, I need to change my phone every year. Mm. Or I need to change my phone every six months. And this goes back, uh, for example, our uh, our manufacturing is actually 70% automated. Really? Absolutely, and this for the high-end models. What, and what does that mean? Like you don't have any humans, like you have 30% humans and everything else is machine? Yes, yes, absolutely. So this is where we ensure the quality. So 70% is being done absolutely automated. And this is where we ensure the quality, we ensure that everything is up to the standards, the amount of tests that we're having for our devices to ensure that this is what the customer deserves. Right. So now coming back to, okay, there's R&D happening, there's... Mi- assurance of quality what is the latest product that you guys have released at in the today's market that's standing out and tell me a bit more about it so the latest device that we have launched it's a smartphone it's a flagship model so before i tell you so usually we're having three categories when it comes to the smartphones right so the first category is the one that we're going to be talking about today is the magic 5 pro and that's the flagship the most premium device that we're having why magic 5 pro (laughs) what is is it is it like does it actually create magic? What? Why that name? It does create a lot of magic, to be honest. Uh, starting off with the camera, when we're talking about the camera, it's it's insanely fast. I'll give you an example. It can capture a picture faster than your eye blinking. No way. 0.001 seconds, you can actually snap the photo. And how is that possible? Like, So this is where the dedication and the R&D, yeah, <laughs> the innovation this. comes in play. Right. So we actually uh, innovated a lot in the camera. We have introduced the Honor Image Engine. And that's one of the main things that we're having that we did a lot of enhancement through the Honor Image Engine to the software and the hardware. Uh, We're talking about utilizing the artificial intelligence. We're talking about innovation that we have done to our lenses. The algorithm, how it's working in the background, is definitely a key. So everything that we have done is dedicated towards giving our consumer a faster shooting experience when it comes to the camera. And does this also mean that the quality of the image that's being produced is automatically better because the camera is able to capture faster images? Absolutely. So usually capturing a fast image is not a problem, but capturing a fast image that is clear, having yeah. clear details, perfect colors, you know, gives you as close as to how your eye sees it. That's the key. So for us, we managed to capture with the Falcon camera system or utilizing the capture, uh, the Falcon capture algorithm. This is where we managed to have super fast capture and we still maintain the details that other brands could not achieve. I'm going to just step outside and then come back into this topic. There's a lot of talk about AI these days. So I want to know, how does Honor use AI within its company to produce these devices and whether AI is also a part of this software which when it captures these fast images? Absolutely. So when it comes to artificial intelligence, it's a huge topic nowadays, right? It's literally a part of everything that we're doing around us, part of everything in the business. So yes, Honor does use it as part, as one of the main pillars when it comes to the smartphone system, uh, whether you're talking about the photography or the performance or all different aspects of the smartphone performance. Right. And therefore, the Honor Image Engine, huge part of it is actually artificial intelligence. Okay. How the camera takes the details through the lens and how it understands it, how it processes it. The whole algorithm is being part of the AI. And this is something that is uh, locally based on Honor's servers. It's not like a someone from outside can access it because this AI only works with data collection. And without that, you cannot improve the memory of the AI. Correct. Absolutely. It's, it's a very good point. Uh, when it comes to the AI, so for example, for our camera system, uh, the preloaded information or, or how we taught the AI to work, this is the key. So the R&D centers, when they're building the software or when they're building the owner image engine, that's where they feed the information, thousands and millions of information of different things around you that the camera can definitely understand just once it sees it. And that's the key. So the idea is it's all in the phone itself. Mm. So it's not cloud-based. You don't need internet that to connect. That means you have a lot of speed at your hand then. Absolutely. Speed is, is a key. Speed is the one main thing that we're focusing on when it comes to Magic Magic 5 Pro. Actually, I was super surprised when I started using the phone. Uh, it's insanely fast. We took it to, to the racetrack in, right. uh, in Yas, and we had, the uh, of course, the car is going insanely fast. What are the top speeds, 250? 250? I think so. I, I believe yeah. the car that we captured the photo of, it was about, it was driving around 220. 
Wow. And within a blink of an eye, just 0.001 seconds, you manage to capture the photo. And the picture makes you feel like the car is actually stationary, not moving. That's how fast the processing is. That's how fast the camera can actually gather the information, process it, utilizing the AI and the owner image engine, and still gives you a pretty clear photo. It was crazy. I asked this question earlier from someone. I was like, I mean, does Dubai police need to start using this tech? <laughs> is it that fast? Uh, it is that fast, and I hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the idea is the same, right? As a speed camera. Yes. At the end of the day. It is a speed camera, yeah, except that when you're talking about the speed camera, the quality and the details is not a concern. Right, right? yeah, you just need the number plate. That's exactly, it. that's it. It's like the number plate, super happy. But for us, main concern is the details. You're able, to, and I've seen, like, you can actually enlarge the picture and the pixels don't tear apart or anything because usually that's what happens and you get a blurry picture if something's moving too fast. Correct, correct. So this is one of the key things that we're having, which is technology that we're using in our sensor, which is known as tetrapixel technology alongside with the uh, different technology that we're using for the focus. What is tetrapixel technology? I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I don't build phones. <laughs> all right, so tetrapixel technology, that's where it actually takes all the details, it enhances it, and we're using within the tetrapixel technology something called four-in-one pixel binning. Okay. Well. So that's where it takes uh, four pixels, combines them together to ensure that you absorb more light, and still maintains the details and the color accuracy. At a certain point, is the camera just trying to recreate the image? No, if just... you point it at a moon that is in a, in a bedroom, it's not going to give you an actual picture of a moon. Mm. <laughs> right, <laughs> if right. You know right. what I mean? Okay. No, no, it does not do that. It, it just, you can say that how it perceives the information yeah. is uh, smarter, better, and more efficient. Fair enough. Um, I want to talk more about how this is actually benefiting the consumer end and how the consumers are reacting to this as well in the market. So this is where the whole idea of being, uh, you know, customer centric yeah. comes in play. So if we think about it, about how the daily life of our, our consumers goes about, it's, it's mainly hanging out with the family, spending time with their kids, uh, going out gatherings, maybe at work or something. And that's where most of the precious moments in your life is yeah. always happening on the go. Yeah. If you think about it, most of the, beautiful, unforgettable memories. It's always in action. Yeah, you're, you're celebrating at a football match. It's your friend's birthday. Everyone's going crazy. Absolutely. And that's where we help them to save these moments perfectly within seconds and without losing any details. If you take a look at the current customer main uh, pain points that they're facing is they always either need to pose yeah. or they need to have a stationary photo or, all right, let me take, uh, I don't know, 100 pictures of this action just to choose the perfect frame. And this is where our phone does all of this automatically. Mm. So just one click, it manages to capture the perfect frame for you. And this is where we're having another technology that comes in the Falcon camera system, which is the AI motion sensing. What is that? So for the AI motion sensing, as I said, most of the precious moments for everybody is either family, friends, something you're celebrating, you always with somebody. And that's where the camera can recognize the person automatically and it will capture the perfect frame for you. You wow. don't even need to click to capture. And the beautiful thing is not only for the humans, it can also recognize cats and dogs. Wow. And if you think about it, most of the people are having dogs nowadays. Or a cat. As or a dog. cat. And it's super difficult to yeah, actually... These, these animals can be really fast sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Now, think about it. You're out of your dog, you're walking in the park, your dog's playing around, you want to capture a perfect photo, you cannot. Yeah, he's, he, how are you going to explain <laughs> a dog, bro? Stop. Exactly. I need to take a picture of you. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. You, so most people, what they do is just record the video. Yes. And then pause it later on and they take a screenshot. So you've but for us, you just turn on the AI motion sensing and it will recognize the perfect frame even for the dog and capture the perfect moment. Wow. So uh, my question over here is that this didn't happen overnight and this takes a lot of time. How much time went behind creating something like this? So actually the innovation of, uh, of the Honor Image Engine yeah. as it's the base, uh, we already launched, uh, I would say, the first part of the Honor Image Engine that was uh, with the Magic 4 Pro last year. Last year, right. Last year, and that was also on the Honor 50. But So it's actually an ongoing project. It's just co continuously day being by improved. Day by day, day by day, uh, I would say month by month, we're always trying to improve the Honor Image Engine. So the next device and the next version of this device or whatever device we launch 
is going to be much better, is going to be much faster, is going to offer something that is truly meaningful for our consumers that, once again, will make their life much easier and much better. Battery is a huge pain point for our customers. How does Honor solve that problem? So this is where the AI actually comes in place. Yeah. Uh, as we all know, when it comes to Honor devices, it's one of the, I would say, most trusted devices right now in the market when it comes to the battery. And the huge role is the artificial intelligence and how we're actually utilizing it with a smartphone. Now, when we're talking about the AI, how do you exactly utilize it? That's where the device starts learning the consumer usage, right. starts learning the habits, starts understanding what's your favorite apps. And accordingly, starts uh, prioritizing the resources at the back. I want to cut you off there. People say that if you have apps running in the background or if you roll the camera too long on your phone, you're going to have your battery draining too fast. Is that the same case with Honor? Absolutely not, because this is where we move on to another topic, which is the Honor Ram Turbo. Right. So the Honor Ram Turbo, this is the technology introduced by Honor, talking about keeping the applications running in the background without actually consuming a lot of battery and without consuming a lot of resources. And at the same time, it gives you the freedom or actually it gives the system itself the freedom to either utilize this extra RAM that right. has been taken from the ROM or not. Okay. So when we're talking about how it works in the background, this is where the RAM Turbo usually prioritizes the applications. It keeps the application sort of running in the background, okay. but without consuming a lot of RAM. So you're talking push notifications and... Uh, uh, this is absolutely something you have 100% control over, perfect. whether you stop these push yeah. notifications or not. But the application itself running in the background will always keep running. So for example, let's say you're running right now 10 applications on your phone. Yeah. They're all open. Yeah. And you close the first app, you just keep it in the running background. Let's say it's a Netflix or YouTube or whatever it is. You keep on using your phone. The moment that you go back to the first app, is going to be exactly where you left it off. Like the page and... The page, the video that you post, everything. Because sometimes the app refreshes, like it just goes back to the... Absolutely. And this is one of the main pain points that we solved for our consumers. So the applications would be running at the background, exactly where you left it. But still at the same time, it does not consume a lot of battery. And another benefit for the Honor Ram Turbo is the response time for the applications. So the lagginess, the glitchiness that you get in some phones. Exactly. So the moment that you click on the app opens right away. Uh, the moment that you decide to exit the app and then go later on to the first app, let's say hours later, yeah. it's still there running. How the whole system responses to our consumer's usage is just phenomenal. It's perfect. Talk to me about the display because this is the key component of any phone. You're literally navigating through it. You cannot use your phone without a display in today's market. Correct. So first of all, the, the display is DxO rank number one, okay. which is one of the main things that we're having in the display, uh, that we ensure our consumers get to spend as much time as they want on their display without actually affecting their eyes. So this is how, one... How do you do that? So this is where we're having the circadian-friendly uh, display, uh, the TUV circadian-friendly display. That's where it ensures that the consumers use the phone for as long as they want, but still does not affect their eyes. As a matter of fact, usually using your smartphone at night right before you go to bed, which is a habit for everybody. Everyone. Uh, you tend to spend a lot of time and you actually do not fall asleep and you do not even feel sleepy. You just keep scrolling endlessly for hours. Absolutely. Look, you're looking for stuff as you just... You, you forget that you were even supposed to sleep. Uh, correct. And this, uh, <laughs> this activity that we do of, you know, getting addicted to our yeah. social media, at the end of the day, it causes a lot of stress to our eyes. Yeah. And this goes back to the blue light rays that is being, you know, emitted from the display. Uh, it goes back to how fast the screen dims. Mm. So I'll give you another example right now. If we shut down this light yeah. all of a sudden and you're using your phone, any other normal phone in the market, the display brightness was just dim all of a sudden, yeah, right? And then just because our eyes do not get used to how the brightness falls all of a sudden, we usually go and we increase the brightness. Yes. Now, having the circadian display and the dynamic dimming technology, it ensures that the level of how dim the screen goes, it goes very slowly that your eyes does not get stressed out all of a sudden. Mm. So it will be reducing, uh, I would say, with the natural uh, relaxation of your eye movement. Therefore, your eyes is not going to be having all of a sudden contract in your eyes. Therefore, it will still be, I would say, very comfortable using it even in dark night conditions. And it's not only about the brightness, but also the color temperature. The attention to detail is insane. I never thought about <laughs> that because personally, I've, I mean, we, we've all used mobile phones and we all, we're all 
custom to smartphones, but this is something I never thought about. That's and I, I never would understand or even realize how it would have how it would affect like over time if you're accustomed to such tech it's only better for you if it performs in that exact way correct correct and uh, again we are trying to be as human centric as consumer centric as much as possible and this is if you take a look at the bigger perspective for the magic 5 pro that's where everything in the device is actually towards that is towards a, towards making our consumer life easier towards making sure that they are safe using the phone towards them enjoying the device throughout their whole day, making their life better, more efficient, more productive, and still get to enjoy the time with their family and still capture it with their phone. It definitely is a magical phone, so I would say it deserves the name Magic. Absolutely. <laughs> on it. And that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen.